listen, you got to get your bombs delivered somehow. And I trust the U.S. <laughs> Postal Service to do that. Not, not, those, not those scabs over at FedEx. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to What well, Larry's Your Problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters with slides. I'm Justin Rosnick. I'm the person who's talking right now, and my pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. I am Alice Caldwell Kelling. Please do not ban me from entering the United States so we can do a live show in person at some point. My pronouns, she and her. Hi, I'm Liam Anderson. Uh, returned from my mystery location. Hmm. Uh, How are you feeling, Liam? Uh, you know, I actually feel all right. Uh, last night was hell. Uh, I worked today, and I was uh, coming pretty close to taking a nap on the clock. Uh, but I feel all right. Uh, also, uh, we have a guest. We have Hello, a guest. guest. Indeed we do. So hello everyone, I am Adam, uh, also known as Adam something on YouTube, uh, pronouns he, him, and I'm glad to be here. Why are you here, Adam? <laughs> I wish I knew. You asked us, motherfucker. No, no, we're going, we're go Adam, Adam is going to explain uh, Romania to us, seen here in two pictures, a flag with a hole cut out of it, and a big ugly building. That's not. I right. don't like it. No, it is not. I will building. attempt. I will attempt to give an explanation if such a thing is possible, but because no, it's, like it's, it. it's Romania, it's nice though, I, like to some extent. <laughs> I I am the only person here who has training in architecture, and I can tell you this is an ugly building. Ugly, <laughs> ugly can still be good though. You've yeah, told me that. Right. I practice that. I live by those words every day of my life. No, Liam. this isn't the good kind of ugly. <laughs> No, you know what, Roz? <laughs> Fuck you. How's that? Okay, we're 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 going to talk about um the the People's Palace. Yeah, and how the whole came to get in this flag. Not originally. Yeah, it was added later. In the building. <laughs> Not originally. It was added later. Uh, well, any holds a goal, I suppose. <laughs> but first, we have to do the goddamn news. All right, so I just want to tell all of the Philadelphia urbanists that I was right and you were wrong. Yes, Once you again, are. Justin is vindicated by history. Yes. Um, Toll Brothers just uh, uh, applied for a permit to keep the Jewelers Row uh, hole. Yeah, a gotta, hole. The, the toll for the hole. next three you years. That boys hole. Yeah, <laughs> the, the toll hole. The toll pussy. The tussy. Yes. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't have said that, but yes. They demolished several years ago a full quarter of one of Philadelphia's most historic streets for to build a, a tall residential tower there. And then what happened, Roz? And then what happened? Oh, well, they just decided America. to sit on it. They're oh, not going to actually build the building. <laughs> what? The, the, wow, the building's I, can't have, not... I couldn't foresee this happening. <laughs> it's... It's it's so it's so dumb. I, I I I hate all the people who were like shilling for this when it was like, oh no, this is gonna be good for we Center City. Density, it's good for actually. density. <laughs> no, they're not nope. actually gonna build the building. Then they're not gonna build the building. The building's not gonna happen. It's not it's real. Just a, it's just a land scam. Yes. It's mm. gonna be it it will probably be a vacant lot for like <laughs> until I'm middle aged. Yeah, but on the plus side, they have this cool, like, uh, sort of retro-looking logo with the, like, diamond around the date. Uh, who doesn't love that, you know? You know what I would prefer, Alice? Hmm. Jewelers Row to be intact. Well, yes. well it's, it's open for business. What do you want from me? For I mean, you sure... not to be open for business? I mean, I'm sure it's going to be a nice building at all, with, like, um, like 3k per month for rent. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because they they tore down like five buildings, and they were going to put one building in their place. Um, and okay. you know that's uh, that's great for like uh, you know storefronts and stuff like that. Yep. Um, no. Which also okay. benefit from density, which we already had, but it's fine. <laughs> this is fucking stupid. So it, fucking stupid. They just tore stupid. down all those buildings for no reason. The important point to pull out of this is that Justin is the man. Who has never been wrong about anything in his life. Aww, He's not going to start now. Uh, 
Amazon. <laughs> I'm right <laughs> all the time. And you should listen to me because <clears throat> of that. That's right. And then you get mad at me when I'm just like, hey, do you want to do a shot of whiskey? And you're like, sure. And then you go to bed and you feel bad. And then you blame me, even though it's not my fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was right at the time, and then and then and then it's I told you Justin, I didn't want to do a shot, and it was like and it's like no, you didn't. No, Justin, you Justin is Justin is like capitalism; he cannot fail, only be failed yes. by you, Liam. <laughs> by, by, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. that's how this goes by and large. <laughs> Although, as a note regarding this this image in front of us, uh, for me, uh, like as in me. Uh, mostly uh, being from the European perspective, including Alice, of course. It's so strange to see Americans tearing down historic buildings to build some kind of like shiny 501 glass and steel bullshit in, in, in mm. place of it. Like in Europe, it's usually like in, Jer in Deutschland, where I live right now, uh, it's usually there's an empty plot on which we build something nice because the Americans bombed it, so it's empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to be fair, did you deserve it? Probably. <laughs> just like, yeah, just sort of calmly asking the German town planner, how did you get this beautiful blank canvas to redesign? It's like, well, you did explode most of it. Yeah, well, yes. you know, you just... It's like, well, did you have it coming? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, uh, well, no, that's, a, be, that's uh... a fun Philly trend, Adam, is uh, ruining our UNESCO-designated World Heritage City uh, to build schlock. Hmm. Right, I think, <laughs> I think we have the weakest historic preservation uh, laws uh, in yeah, the country. I second that. Um, wow, okay. Yeah. They're, they're awful. Genuinely awful. They, they don't work. I mean, maybe we should have talked about that well, we in the historic anything, preservation yeah. episode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this was supposed to be a 30-story building they were going to put up here, and um, hmm. now they're just not going to put a building here. They're just not going to do it. There's no mm. building. Coming it's it's here. more. It's more about the vibes. It's about, it's like jazz. It's about the buildings you don't build. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So that was that was the news. I only did one news today. Nothing else switched. happened. It's very yes. cool. Oh yeah, nothing else happened. <laughs> nothing we talked about all the important news last we already, week. We, listen, we were already sad about Afghanistan. Mm. All right, so we have to talk about something called the Warsaw Pact. Yeah, the good guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have to ask, what is the Warsaw Pact? What is the Warsaw Pact? Yes. It's, what, it's a group what is of, good, actually? It's a group of super friends who got yes. together after the Second World War uh, to try and contain NATO aggression by means of a multilateral Defensive pact. It's true. There was well, no kind of coercion uh, there at all. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, <laughs> so according to the, def the official definition, it's a collective defense treaty signed in Warsaw, Pol uh, Poland, between the Soviet Union and seven other Euro Eastern European uh, Eastern Bloc Socialist Rep Republics of Central Eastern Europe in May 1955. So basically, this is, as you mentioned, it is a counterweight to NATO. And in theory, it's an organization for quote unquote mutual protection. Uh, however, uh, in practice, it's just an easier way for Moscow to roll tanks into those countries should there be any attempts at establishing a democracy. Hmm. Wow, it's crazy how that works. Are you suggesting that this is just like red colonialism? Because like I don't think that the Soviet Union would act imperialistically. Oh, they they would never do that. That would no. not be praxis. No. Uh, <laughs> and this, uh, I, I, I've put in the notes here that the Warsaw Pact is also a cool way of making very varied decks in war game European escalation. <laughs> yes. If you want some like cool Polish infantry, you can you can do that thanks to the Warsaw Pact. Wow. Many 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 cool tanks, which would not have existed otherwise. Oh, that's true. Oh yeah. So this is uh, this this is something I I wanted to maybe introduce. I mean, I think a lot of our like ourselves and a lot of our listeners have you know 
radical politics, right? Yes. L- L- Liam's excused from this slide because he's an anarchist, but those of us who have real politics right. we're going to talk yes. about. Oh, yeah. Those, those, those of us who... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Liam, Liam not included. Most of us have radical politics. And you have to like <laughs> look, look back on this thing called the Soviet Union. Right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have a drop for this. Let me just uh, scroll down here. Uh... This is going to be great when I do the bonus episode on communism. <laughs> <laughs> I will go full on Prager you. I will be unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> just sorry, 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 Liam. What's that? I can't hear you over the. <laughs> 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 so you 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 may you may have radical politics. You have to strike some kind of balance on what hmm. I call the spectrum of communism. Oh, a thing communists are famously good at is striking a balance. <laughs> <laughs> right, which is some of the bad stuff about Soviet communism is Western propaganda, but also some of it is true. Hmm. Mm. Well, like people, people don't get that sometimes the best propaganda is stuff that is true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> it's it's very. It, in fact, it's the best thing you can do is to be like, <clears throat> "Oh, you're doing this fucked up shit." And if they actually are, you know, what are you supposed to say to that? It, th- yeah. This is a lie. Okay, that works for a while, but like, if you can prove it, then eh? right. So, I, I, my definition of the spectrum of communism is, you know, at the one hand. You're super tanky. You say North yeah, Korea me. is a secret workers' paradise over here, <laughs> right? Sure. And at the other end, you're super anti-communist. You say Ukrainian Waffen SS guys were freedom fighters, actually. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, oh, uh, sh- just like every every single landlord who had their feelings hurt is in the big book of victims of communism. Yes. Uh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, I put myself around here, which I define as Kulak's deserved it. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm, I, I don't know. Well, I, 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 I'm like so. slightly, slightly, slightly tankier than than Justin is, I think. But you know, I've I, I, I've mellowed a bit in in, in my sort of middle age. Uh, in, in my youth, I was much more in the like, yeah, no, the good guys. Yeah, <laughs> mm. <laughs> but the thing is, the thing about the Soviet Union was that, um, well, uh, having grown up in Hungary, and me being a Hungarian, so I sort of grew up on the ruins of the Soviet Empire, so to speak. Mm. It, it was like you know, um, the country went through like varying degrees of success. Now it's like a far right hellhole with Orbán, but you know, oh well. Uh, but during the Soviet times, I hear the rule of thumb was that whatever they said, the opposite was true. <laughs> so for so for example yeah so for example the the when uh, uh, this like Hungarian comedian who is kind of uh, he's an old guy he grew up during the uh, Soviet times he said so and so when we heard on TV uh, announced by comrade X Y Z that in the Soviet Union there is no anti-Semitism we knew that our friends were already packing at home. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, there's there's other sort of uh, and just 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 for you to get the feel of the era, really, uh, I've prepared two jokes hmm. uh, oh, about, from from the era, which which sort of depicts the actually three, uh, but I think they're shorties. So, Ivan is asked what he would do if the Soviet borders were opened. I would climb the highest tree. He replies. Asked why, he responds. So I wouldn't get trampled in the stampede out. <laughs> then, then, he, then he's asked what he would do if the U.S. Bo- if the U.S. border is opened. I would climb the highest tree, he says, so I can see the first person crazy enough to come here. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, the, the other classic is the uh, you know someone happened to call the KGB headquarters just after a major fire. Uh, we, we we cannot do anything. The KGB has just burned down. He was told. Five minutes later, he called back and was told again that the KGB had burned. When he called a third time, the the telephone operator recognized his voice and asked, Why do you keep calling back? I just told you, the KGB has burned down. I know, the man said. I just like hearing it. (laughs) (laughs) You want to hear my favorite Soviet joke? Go ahead. Okay, so uh, a new guy arrives in the gulag, right? And, uh, you know, a guy sidles up to him and is like, How long are you in for? Uh, Five years. Um, What are you in for? 
well, I was, I, was a, I was a plumber, I was an engineer. And the, and the old guy says, well, they don't give you five years for being a plumber, what happened? And he says, well, I got this job uh, where I had to, like, inspect the boiler in the KGB offices. <laughs> so I got down there, and I looked at it, and I looked at the boiler, and I put my hands on my hips, and I said, uh, this whole system needs replacing. What <laughs> <laughs> was that? We have a joke that uh, Stalin used to tell about himself. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> Stalin was giving a speech to, um, you know, the uh, the the Politburo or something. Everyone filed in. You know, the last row fills in first, and then the second to last row fills in next. So on and so forth. Um, and Stalin is giving this great speech, right? Um, and uh, so during the speech. Someone sneezes. <laughs> Stalin says, who was it? Who did that? Who was it? And no one speaks up. And Stalin orders the first row executed. No one speaks up. No one speaks up still. Yeah. So he orders the second row executed. <laughs> then, finally, <laughs> he's about to order the third row executed. One guy stands up, says... It was me, Comrade Stalin. And Stalin says, Bless you. We can't get too bogged down in telling communist jokes, but I do have my favorite Stalin one, which is uh, Stalin goes to the theater. And it's a comedy. Um, and uh, th they ask him afterwards, Comrade, what did, you, what did you think of the play? He said it was excellent, but the, uh, the, the clown, he has a mustache like mine. Kill him. Um, and one of his aides sort of thinks about it and he goes, with Comrade Stalin, perhaps he could shave the moustache. And Stalin says, excellent idea. Shave, then shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, if you're on the spectrum of communism... No, we're all on the spectrum, baby. <laughs> if you're on the spectrum of communism, I think we all need to acknowledge that there is actually a very, very bad man in communism, hmm. uh, and that guy was Nikolai Ceausescu. Oh yeah, one of, yeah, one of not, let's not say, not many. Right. <laughs> yeah. Very, very bad man. Hmm. Oh, these comments, <laughs> this comment section is going to be a hoot. Yes. <laughs> I want to just go on record as once again stating that I am an anarchist. It's going to be fun <laughs> watching them all try and spell <laughs> Ceausescu. <laughs> No, that's the fun thing. I can't spell Ceausescu, but I can say it. Mm. How how do you do on <laughs> spelling Enver Hoxha? I don't think about it. I don't think about Enver. Oh, and Enver Hoxha, the like uh, leader of Albania for many years, the other great like uh, sort of like weird Stalinist of the. Was he the like, bunker guy? Yes, the bunker. The bunker guy. Guy. Yes, yeah, he was yeah, the yeah. bunker guy. Oh yeah, Enver Hoxha. Yeah, okay, I, I got you. Hoxha. Hoxha. En, 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 Enver Hoxha. Enver Hoxha. Yeah. Hoxha, Hoxha is, uh, he's, it, it's an easier, to, easier to spell, harder to, harder to pronounce. I did like his, his, his never ending beef with Tito. That's admirable. Despite the fact that the Warsaw Pact was, you know, an entirely organic communist revolution, <laughs> uh -huh. which had no <laughs> influence from outside forces, mm -hmm. there were some, Attempts to liberalize the Eastern Bloc, right? Yeah, it's called the Central Intelligence Agency. Exactly. This With is their all... partners, Coca Cola and Pepsi. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, the, the 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 first and I think the most famous one was in Hungary in 1956, where after weeks of student protest, uh, Imre Nagy became prime minister. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, oh. Noj, Noj is pronounced Imre Noj. It, is it Noj? Noj. <laughs> I didn't. I did not know that. It's he like was, try, trying to pronounce G and Y together, like G, G. Hmm. Makes sense. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, a anyway, I <laughs> understand. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> 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 he 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 became prime minister, sort of for the purpose of withdrawing Hungary from the Warsaw Pact, and then. And then I think what it was happened? Khrushchev at that point. He sent in the tanks to, you know, stop that yeah, nonsense. Under, right? under everyone's yeah. favorite general, uh, Marshal Zhukov, mm -hmm. uh, oh, wow. was was the commander of that operation. Fuck yeah, dude! 
Yeah. yeah, this is this is where we get the term tanky from, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, most uh, a lot of the European communist parties broke from the Soviet Union after this because, you know. Oh, yeah. It was, it was a real this sort was, of like crisis of faith for a lot of leftists in, uh, in the West, yeah. especially for like older leftists who had been like, I, I mean, you have to understand that like the, the thing about like the, the common like uh, line about the Soviet Union is that it was just funding every like leftist movement and every leftist party uh, and everybody sort of left of liberal in in Western Europe and the United States uh, for its entire existence. And that was also uh, true. <laughs> um, and so consequently, when uh, these people who had been, you know, taking taking the money, which is not necessarily good money, but had been, uh, you know, taking the money from the Soviets. Uh, it's on, practical. Yeah, on, on yeah. the recognizance that this is like, this is our last best hope for socialism. Yeah, yeah. And like some of them believing this very, entirely idealistically, like having seen a, a, a world war and having believed that like, oh yeah. yes, this Stalin guy is like the last hope of like uh, civilization against fascism or whatever. Um, and then, oops. And then, oops. Know, whoops, yeah. Either, de depending on how like how how far gone you are at this point, either uh, revisionism has like won to the extent that it has to be like brutally crushed back down, and you're going to become like a, a sort of a Soviet loyalist, or you see, oh, the Soviet Union that I thought was this. Uh, you know, beacon for for socialism and progress and uh, human rights, even is a a acting a lot like uh, bad, America, or acting out. a lot like Britain, and, and that's uh, how my mother became just, an anarchist. Yes. You know, uh, w w what now? Yeah, and I mean, the the fundamental problem I see with with the Soviet Union was that, uh, and and just like Russia in general, because I mean, let let's not kid ourselves. Like the Soviet Union and everything mm. that entailed came out of Moscow, essentially. Like from from this uh, sort of established Moscow elite, um, that th the main problem that I see is that the Enlightenment kind of stopped halfway to Russia. Like it kind of stopped uh, halfway between Kiev and Kharkiv in Ukraine, and then never went further. And so uh, and so, of course, uh, as people say, Vladimir Putin nowadays is himself a czar uh, and nothing else. Like the, his his. A style of of uh, governance and just the way he runs the country is fully that of a czar. Uh, well, like not fully, but you know, if if you get the idea, it's similar. Hmm. And so the Soviet Union bore the imprints, sort of, uh, of czarist Russia, obviously. And well, I guess that that was a big part of the reason, and of course the the, the lack of enlightenment um, uh, thought. That uh, as soon as, like, as soon as the czarist sort of oligarchical elite ended, then came the the red coated oligarchical elite, aka the Soviet Union, where basically party officials became the new uh, rich owner class through the state apparatus. Yeah, and it's it, it's it's a tragedy, is the thing. It's a it's a popular tragedy. And what's interesting is the thing that occasionally makes me as a communist go, "Oh, we just live in the bad timeline." Is that like when you look back, uh, you know, at any of the original, any of the old Bolsheviks, including Lenin, uh, if you had said, "Okay, there's going to be one European country that becomes like the bulwark of socialism," uh, and then there's going to be like another one that's going to fall into fascism. You would never in a million years have picked uh, Russia and Germany in that yes, order. Yeah. Right. Every, yeah. ev every, like, every communist thinker of consequence thought that the revolution would start in Germany. Yes. And it, yeah. it, it yes. got crushed instead, and as a consequence, all of these guys were left to sort of like make do and to try and like modernize uh, what had been a sort of very, very decrepit empire. Mm -hmm. And the result was... Uh, but hey, hey, I disagree. Hey, look, elections are coming up. The CDA is down. The Social Democrats are coming up. We got this. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shopping with us. We have, yeah, we have, we have, we have, we have this. <laughs> but uh, although one, one, one further bit of proof, like I, I, I disagree with you that, that we are living in the bad timeline. We are not living in the bad timeline because like imagine the sort of the, the, the uh, sort of bad parallel universe for example, when Ross is like, so in conclusion, car good, train bad. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm just I'm just in Rosniak for Prager University. Yeah, we're all we're, oh, we're running said, the like I most popular watch, engineering podcast in the sixth right. Prager Yeats, Prager Yeats, Ross. I don't like that idea. Uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> that that would be my uh, that would be my show on um, 
uh, Nazi YouTube, which is just YouTube. <laughs> you just say Prager U. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know Dennis Prager is Jewish, but uh, the the word you're yeah. looking so, for so, is so uh, so. Norris tried to like do moderate yeah. liberal reforms while still being still being a socialist, which is also very funny. Not even like necessarily no, yeah. like a, what mean, we would think of as as like a a democratic socialist <laughs> or a social democrat. He was still a communist, but like yeah, up up up. All of these like um, revolutions and revolts and like political changes in the Eastern Bloc, they were led by communists. The people mm -hmm. who supported them were communists. They yep. just wanted out from under the boot of the Soviet Union, which you know it, it, it understandable. was understandable. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, like the most reactionary tendency you can identify in these easily is just nationalism, and that's so, I, I think pretty reasonable when in nationalism yeah, in no, like, no, no nationalism in the Soviet Union. What? I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like th thinking, like in terms of like uh, you know, I'm a member of a, a fraternal socialist brotherhood. Thinking of myself as like uh, you know a Hungarian or a Czechoslovak right. um, because the USSR. It, has hasn't existed like, for more than 40 years It makes years a lot more point. sense yeah, when you exactly. consider there are a lot of guys with guns and tanks who are trying to get you to not do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, damn, it's, it's almost like the Soviet Union is just like a fascist oligarchy masquerading as, you know, like with the paint of red. Wow, it mm -hmm. is almost, almost like that. Almost. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. All right. So about a decade after the Hungarian Revolution, we had the Prague uh, Spring. Also, of course, of empire bad, no matter what color it is. And what a, what a party that was. Yeah. This Interesting the, uh, few days. This was in the Czechoslovak Socialist Republic, right? And you have... Um, the prime minister was uh, Alexander Dubček. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Dubček, yeah, it's, it's Dubček. generally yeah, it's, it's all right. Yeah, he was he was trying to implement some liberalizing reforms. You know, it was socialism with a human face, right? Yeah, you you don't want to do that, otherwise you might find that uh, socialism without a human face is landing a lot of paratroopers at your capital city. Oh, I was going to say without a human face, like some sort of uh, horrific uh, Lovecraftian monster. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm kind of bummed you didn't get a horrific Lovecraftian monster. That was like the one that. thing the Soviet airborne forces got to do in between World War II and Afghanistan was uh, a drop into Prague, which is, eh, you know, it's nice for them to get the exercise, I suppose. I guess so, yeah. I mean, so this, this, there are some liberalizing reforms here where you have like a multi party democracy, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, you know, revisionism. Um, revisionism, yeah, also, exactly. Also, also, in Czechoslovakia, the press was relatively free up until the uh, Prague Spring, of course. Mm. So things were allowed which you normally would not have been allowed. So the, the, Czech, the Czechoslovakia was sort of a slight, uh, you know, exception in the Warsaw Pact countries because you know there things were still allowed there, or at least some things. Yes, uh, yeah. and, and, and like yeah. having having this capacity for some autonomy in the Warsaw Pact, which was then very rapidly judged to be too dangerous. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Socialism with a human face uh, also yeah. crushed very quickly. Yeah. 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 O oops, oops, number two. And this was, um, you know, supported by a lot of Warsaw Pact countries, but not all of them, right? Including mm -hmm. in Romania by a man named Nicolae Ceausescu, right? Or if you're my parents' cat, Nicolae Miaucescu. What a man he was. <laughs> so Ceausescu had risen to power in Romania. He'd made a a speech, a famous speech on August 21st, 1968, condemning the Warsaw Pact invasion of this Czechoslovak Soviet Republic, right? And it was Socialist Republic, not Soviet Republic. Um, and this this guy, okay, so Ceausescu was actually like a guy who had, you know, he was he was a communist. He had he had been thrown in prison multiple times for organizing communist uh parties in Hungary before um, you know before the Warsaw Pact existed, right? Um, and he, you know, because he condemned this uh, revolution, or because he condemned the suppression of this revolution in Czechoslovakia, he, he became very, very popular, right? Uh, but the thing is, he used this, he used this popularity to sort of build a government that turned itself into uh, Stalinism, but more. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's uh, as as um, a, a great communist, George W. Bush, once said, "Dictatorship sounds pretty good so long as I get to be the dictator." Yes. Yeah, Ceausescu heard that and basically had it tattooed on himself. And uh, uh, Nick Nikolai Ceausescu, a man who looks the way Gary Larson drew people in the yep. Far Side. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> This this cow tools looking motherfucker is now uh, like the sole authority in your country of several million people. Yeah, who's also a former, I think, shoemaker assistant. Mm -hmm. That's yes. his. That those are his credentials. But do do you know how he called himself? By the way, no. The genius of the Carpathians. Dudes rock. I mean, Dudes rock. <laughs> just S yeah. sigma, sigma male energy. That's right. It's That's, grind that set. Honestly, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh god. <laughs> I was, I was grinding. Well, you're not even mad at that, you know. All right. So he's gonna do. He's gonna do Chad shit on See, Romania. He's he gonna do, do muscle confusion. Immediately starts doing Chad shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh god. So. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things he did when he came to power is he was he sort of started trying to do some liberalization, right? Mm. Um, and and then when it That's doesn't work, he sort of goes the opposite way completely. Oh boy! Um, so you, you know, there's a little bit of liberalization of the press when he comes to power. This is nineteen nineteen sixty six, a little bit earlier than that, maybe. Um, it's One just his, it's classic like apparatchik brain, right? Is you 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 think, oh, maybe we can we can do some things that are good, and then it it, it like erodes your grip on power very slightly, and you're like, oh shit, no, no right, fuck, go back, go fuck. back, go back. Uh, uh, tanks, tanks. Yes. What if we what yeah. if we made the entire country out of the cops? One of the things <laughs> I, I it was like really difficult for me to like figure out a narrative on this guy. You no, know, because well, he was he was a like, weird dude. As was weird, that's dude. why I bring up Hozier too. Is yeah. because he was like a very weird, very idiosyncratic dude. Because that's kind of what happens when you have uh, like this situation where you have absolute power, and it's like due to the way the Soviet Union worked. Like Khrushchev never had absolute power. Brezhnev certainly didn't. There were always yeah. networks of like within the military or within the party that could act as like ve like credible threats to their power mm -hmm. in ways that made them sort of act in different ways for better and worse. Uh, whereas if you're in a small enough country and you you like lock it down hard enough, whether you're like Hoja or whether you're like Yogi Dimitrov or whether you're Todor Zhivkov or whether you're Ceausescu, it's much, much easier for you to just be like, oh, the, the, the like nexus of opposition to me within the government is one guy, kill him. And then you just yes. do whatever you want. Right. We no, talked about Topic 04. Yeah. We, talked, <laughs> we talked about that uh, on my episode of Lions about the central African yeah, but I, 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 I have freak. heard rumors that, that he was actually like like a mentally sort of uh, hindered, so to speak. Like he mm. was he was not completely sort of there, there. Which which as we move on, I believe we will see evidence of. But I don't want to spoil everything. <laughs> anyway, so there's this decree, decree 770 in 1966. I, uh, people like this is the most defining moment of 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 like the Ceausescu um, regime was decree seven seventy. Um, so he sort of wants to he wants to make Romania into a world power, and part of that is increasing the population, right? G good Which, luck, um, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the urbanists <laughs> should listen up right now. The, the, the genius <laughs> of the Carpathians is telling you to get fucking. Yes, <laughs> one billion <laughs> Romanians. <laughs> So, you know, you increase the population, but it's not, you we wouldn't do that through like immigration, which would be the rational way to do it. No, because uh, that, that to... hinders your like nationalism thing. You can't, you can't, yeah, exactly. it's very difficult to balance that thing of like, I want a strong country X, but also I want to like uh, have a bunch of people immigrate to country X. Very difficult. Yes. Maybe he just wanted to see some people fuck. Yeah. So, so, so what he what he did was, you know, the idea is we're going to increase the native-born population, and the way we're going to do that is, um, Romania had very good access to contraception and abortion prior to mm. Ceausescu. One of one of the good things of communism. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There, there. Of the good things about communism, that is one of them. Right. 
Uh, but Ceausescu decided, well, you know, actually, no, fuck. If if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go, fuck, you're gonna have a baby. Mm. Um, so he made contraception <laughs> illegal. He made abortion illegal. Uh, he made s- state benefits available to women who had more than five children. Um, mm-hmm. Just trying to like spread spread around the sort of like powerfully erotic vibes of that face. Uh, you, you kind of like lose yourself in the like waves of his hair. You not? The, yeah. The the dude the dude is like weird. Yo, the, weird this vibe guy is telling face. you you need to have more sex. You it's like, need. Oh, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you need to have more sex, and it needs to not be protected. <laughs> oh, he's he's a sigma. What can you do? Yeah, you need to bear back the dog. I'm just I'm sorry, but you have to for communism. <laughs> so uh, it did it did rapidly the, the the population increased very quickly but uh it turned out that the um you know they didn't quite have the capacity to deal with all the kids mm. uh, which resulted in an orphan crisis which remains to this day in Romania um <laughs> Oops. Again, because of this one dude, which is not something like as we sort of move more and more away from the sort of like great man era of history and stuff, you think yeah. oh, th- th- there are way fewer like demographic changes that you can trace to, like one dude. Like you go back far enough and it's stuff like, oh, you know, Genghis Khan killed an appreciable percentage of Earth's population or whatever. But like, uh, it, it, no, this is one of them. This is a lot of, lot of, lot of. Kids who grew up yeah. in Romania because of like one Gary Larson looking motherfucker. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and Ceausescu like uh, sort of as it's it, it's strange, but it was effective because you know he was um he 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 was trying to move Romania away from Soviet influence, hmm. right? But he did that as opposed to being more liberal. He did that by being more Stalinist. A wackadoodle, yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and curiously, again, this is one of those things where you have a couple of guys who try to do this, and I, I, I'm going back to Hoja again, but because they're all so weird, none of them actually like get on with each other. And no, so yes. you end up with a bunch of like hyper Stalinist microstates rather than what could have been, you, you start to suspect, a sort of like uh, credible. Uh, right opposition to the Soviet Union. Um, Tito hmm. and Hulk, Hawks, how'd you say? F. 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 F, <laughs> F Mr. Bond. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Tito, Tito was the only man who could unite the Balkans. Mm. Um. <laughs> And look what there, what that, where that got us. Uh, <laughs> if the rule that you followed brought you to this, yeah. <laughs> so, like, uh, so the, the the but you know, uh, Romania was far enough outside the Soviet sphere of influence that um, it was the first uh, country that um, a U.S. president visited, which was Nixon in what, 1969. Ever? Yeah, communism. Yeah. We're scared to leave our our tiny island. You know. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to to follow the mindset of of the of your average American. Don't try and do that. It's yeah, a horrible mistake. I tried to do it from. once, and it Bad made idea, me so yes. weird. I started a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Adam, you wrote the rest of the slide. Go. Oh, oh yes. So do. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Finally. So uh, do you do you see the picture on the right? What do you see there? Can you tell me? I see a. Uh... A ballasted subway station. That's interesting. That wooden ties on ballast underground. Incredible. Yeah, well, don't, don't, I love don't, it. don't. Yeah, don't pay attention, pay attention to that. It, it must have been like yeah, I'm sure it was like personal designed by the genius of the Carpathians, which, <laughs> uh, uh, which actually, which is un- which un- unironically might be true. So, do you notice anything else peculiar about this metro stop? Hmm. Well, the platforms are very narrow. Right, uh, and do you know why that is? Because. All right, let, let me, t- let me tell you. I watched you. your video, Adam. 
<laughs> every, every, everyone, everyone on the planet did. <laughs> You're not special. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, so basically, what happens here? In case you didn't watch, watch, watch the Dubai video, in you know whatever. <laughs> but but um, so here, what happened was the uh, so Nikolai Ceausescu back in the day commissioned a metro system for uh, Bucharest because, of course, the city was growing. People were getting uh, moved in. And, uh, you know, the, the need arose for a high speed sort of great separate public transit system. So the engineers sat down and designed a whole system for Bucharest, which actually made sense. And then Ceausescu was like, okay, no, you know what? Fuck <laughs> that. Sigma made a grind set. I'm going to do the whole thing myself. <laughs> <laughs> if you and want he, something done right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. In, in, you know, in, in <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. Right. So he, he, his idea of right was to take the metro line and lead it under the river, but like along the river. So the metro line doesn't like cross the river underneath. It goes along the river, underneath the river, which actually wasn't even a real river. Like the river going through the uh, the city center is like there was this. It was this artificial canal filled with like tap water, under which there was the real river, which was basically like a stream of like toxic shit in in a in a sewer. <laughs> so, and underneath was the metro and um Ceausescu actually you know drew it up everyone thought it was stupid but of course if you say that it is then you you know get executed so whatever yeah let's do it <laughs> genius of the Carpathians you're you're smart <laughs> and so and so they did it and the thing was that um there was when the so when the engineers were like uh, okay well, do we have a choice no okay fine fuck it so they they uh presented the station layout to the Ceausescu couple because Ceausescu's wife was also, uh, for some god-awful reason, involved in this. It's and called so, feminism, Adam. I was about to say yeah, that. Yeah, okay. that's what it's called. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, g- girl boss, Elena Ceausescu. That's right. Uh, and so, so, they, 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 so they put up this plan in front of the couple, and, be, and so Elena Ceausescu, who used to be, I think, a... a worker at a clothes factory or something i don't recall anyway also like very well versed in city planning as you can tell they, so they presented the plans and Elena Ceausescu looked at the map looked at the station layout and asked okay why is there a station at piata romana which is the central square like what what, what factory is there which is a very sort of you know eastern Bloc question to ask and the engineers were like, no, th- there are no factories, but there's the Bucharest University of, Tech- of, of Economics, and there's a ton of students. And okay. To which she responded, and, and I'm quoting, I, I translated, this, I, I translated this, this from Romanian. She said, students, they've gotten fat. They grew a belly. They should walk. No station at Piata. Let them walk. Mm-hmm. That's bad. So, so, that's yeah. Yeah. so Elena yeah. Ceausescu d- decided that the students were too fat, apparently, and uh, then she forbade the engineers from building that station. And so Nicola Ceausescu said nothing to that, and so nobody else dared to say no to his wife, obviously, because of course you get the firing squad if you do. So, but the engineers were sort of one step ahead of these two, well, geniuses of the Carpathian, and. <laughs> And they thought, okay, we, so they thought, okay, so this is a this is a an obviously stupid idea that we are not building a station at the, at one of the central, very important hubs of the city. So what they did was, okay, they assumed that public pressure will force the Ceausescu couple, the power couple, uh, to um, to build to have the station built in retrospect, right? So what they did was they secretly excavated a station area disguised as tunnel boring. And because of that, since, it, since they had to disguise it as like normal works, they couldn't, uh, they, they couldn't like excavate a normal sort of station uh, cavern. And that's why you have these like narrow ass dangerous platforms that you see on the, on the picture on the right. <laughs> Because this is what they could get away with, essentially. Because of course, if if this shit turns out, like if if it turns out that someone opposed the 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 uh, misses, then you get the firing squad, you know. 
but and in the end, as the engineers predicted, there was a public backlash and um, a public pressure. And then the engineers were like, huh, would you look at that? So there's actually enough space to build a station here. It must be magic. Cool. So now we have a station. An idiotic looking, dangerous and narrow station. But <laughs> at, at least they did it, you know? That's, that's compromised. That's how the sausage gets made. Whoever decided to actually excavate this thing, I, I want to retroactively award them a uh, hero of socialist labor. Award. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some alpha energy right there. <laughs> <laughs> but then this, but then from here, kind of like as, as Ceausescu was popular in the beginning, but as time went on, he started sort of like sort of things went downhill, sort of faster than expected, so to speak. Mm. Mm. Romanians so, sort of going, yeah. "Hey, your vibes kind of off. Yeah, your vibes are off." Yeah. So um, just just to just to uh, foreshadow what what is going to happen in 1981. Ceausescu began this austerity program to quote unquote eliminate Romania's national debt. Oh boy. Now, this was because he was enamored with this. Uh, 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 people and I also would assume that this was because he was influenced by the Jewish ideology yes. uh, of, of North Korea, where he was prior, like a decade or not, maybe not a decade, but a few years before. And so he said, okay, we're going to do this austerity program and we're going to eliminate Romania's national debt, which was just some like. 10 billion US dollars or something back in the day, which nowadays would be like 30 or 40 or something. It's not, nothing terrible. But still, <laughs> his austerity program, I mean, you know, compared to the US or something, but <laughs> compared to the US, the, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, however, in Romania, this actually caused severe shortages of even the basic goods, like, you know, foods and gas. And um, as in like, you know, fuel for the car. And the support kind of started dwindling behind him. Uh, but but the program itself was actually successful in terms of paying back the debt. Like he actually did manage to pay back the debt, and um, but it was less successful in terms of him staying alive. More on that later. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a lesson to every deficit hawk out there. But he also had this. Um, <laughs> he also had this uh, deep queen's ass mansion. Yeah, a Mac mansion uh, hell. <laughs> <laughs> I th I think this looks cool, actually. Yeah, especially that that like cheese board ceiling over the pseudo Indian pool. Oh yeah, I'd probably, yeah. yeah I'd, I'd probably, I probably, you know, I I well, I would probably live here if it, if it, if the option <laughs> yeah. were given to me. All of these look like one of those AI generated pictures that are like name one thing in this yeah. image. Yeah, click on horse shit. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and but the the uh, so the four pictures you can see here can you see it? yes or yes. uh, the mention from outside which is which looks kind of unassuming uh, but it was it was fucking enormous it's, uh, uh, it's so, a very italian eight um, yes yeah va vaguely italian eight i guess you would call it but yeah i mean as close the, as the it cornice gets. is huge yeah which well, i like. you know <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's that might be the nice thing about this house. The rest is like kind of eh, yeah, you know. Because um, I mean, uh, so this mansion right here, it looks small. It looks like you know, looks like it's a it's slightly bigger than like Grover House, right? <laughs> <laughs> but this building actually has like this. This just continues on. This thing has eighty rooms. That's eight and zero. Rooms. Eighty rooms. This is an eighty-room uh, building. Which so one the, uniquely terrible looking? Uh, yeah, Man, I, I mean, wish I had eight rooms. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and it's and this thing has like. I mean, by the way, the, the culprit, uh, the person responsible for this interior design was Elena Ceausescu. You know, it's who was inspired, I guess, by by her foreign trips. So this this is basically like the Pinterest influence before Pinterest, yes. but worse. <laughs> And so this monstrosity has multiple salons, multiple study rooms and bedrooms, obviously, with Louis the Fourteenth slash Fifteenth era furniture hmm. in it. Because, because why the fuck not? And uh, it's got children's luxury suits, suites, uh, and indoor yeah, swimming. Ch pool. Children's luxury yeah. suits is more of a Lukashenko vibe. Yeah, but uh, like you know, these, these the people Nathan J. Robinson mansion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and it also had a, has an indoor swimming pool, as you can see. It looks ugly as sin, but whatever. At least they have it. Also, it, it has cinema. a drop ceiling. It, mm. There's yeah. a drop ceiling with the indoor swimming pool. It's yeah. like, man, have you ever thought about what humidity is? Have you ever right. considered, like, <laughs> you have, like, small, moist chunks of asbestos dropping down on you when you're swimming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah well all expenses are borne by the taxpayers anyway so who gives a shit this is true <laughs> <laughs> and so it, 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 the house also had a private cinema where according to reports uh nikolai church school watched uh, liked watching uh like uh old like gangster films and uh uh, uh westerns and especially kojak the uh this old sort of detective slash cop series he loves you baby yeah, yeah. And <laughs> dudes rock. I mean, this is this is a, this is a weird thing with dictators. They love this shit. Um, yeah. like, uh, Hitler loved a western. Also loved like uh, Disney. Um, I think Stalin was big into his cartoons as well. So mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but th this being said, though, Elena's favorite was Dallas. Actually, so Elena yeah. Ceausescu was watching Dallas in the private. She theater. did a horrible job of imitating it. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, as far as the yeah. shooting goes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the house also had a wine cellar, uh, an indoor winter garden with statues, a fountain, and exotic plants. Elena was really into exotic plants. She also wanted to put exotic plants in the Bucharest metro, the way I heard. Hmm. You know, like underground plants which need a lot of sunlight, but you know. <laughs> yeah, to yeah. enliven your commute, you can just see like a rare orchid or something. Cool. Yeah, yes. uh, underground. Yeah, like I, I believe the plan was abandoned. Like I, I just heard these rumors from like Hungarian sort of metro enthusiast circles. There were like, some oh, songbirds oh. in there every day. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the house also had, by the way, a nuclear shelter, which was accessible from the wine cellar. I mean, nice. yeah, just grab a couple of bottles as you're going in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also, something very inter interesting, interesting trivia about this house is that it had, inside of this house, was the first and for a long time only color TV in Romania. Hell yeah. Well, you couldn't watch Dallas in black and white. Good yes. God. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, so this so this this is a this is a real little appetizer before we get into the the big the, the, the main, main course. Events. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm. So <laughs> Ceausescu took a trip in nineteen seventy one to North Korea. <laughs> or as we like to call it Korea. Korea, yes, <laughs> exactly. The People's Republic of Korea. That's right. Um so in nineteen seventy one Ceausescu visited China, Mongolia, North Korea, and North Vietnam, but crucially North, North Korea, right? And he was introduced to a communist philosophy known as Juche, <laughs> which yeah, it's Korean English, for you do whatever the fuck you want. Yes, it's, Kore <laughs> it's, it's Korean for dudes rock. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, it, it's self-reliance, right? He met uh, Kim Il Sung, right? Um, and North Korea in the 1970s. I mean, there was this, there was this weird period after the Korean War for, that extended for a long time, where actually North Korea, by our current standards of you know GDP, so on and so forth, um, North Korea was actually you know doing better than South Korea for a yeah, long time. Well, like people talk about the Marshall Plan, but the Soviet Union in another like broadly good move did pour a lot of money into like improving the living standards of people in like its allies like North Korea and Cuba the downside of that was making them just talk of self reliance aside in incredibly dependent on those things um oh yeah also, i mean Juche has always been fake yeah also <laughs> at this point south korea was like on its like fourth consecutive fascist dictatorship um, yes <laughs> Because that's like that was like the '60s and '70s CIA's bread and butter. It was like, okay, we need a reliable guy in here. Let's find the weirdest general in this country's army. Have him kill his predecessor, and now he's the boss. Yes. 
Uh, but Ceausescu was sort of inspired by the fact that North Korea could sustain itself outside of the Soviet sphere of influence and Spoiler outside alerts, of the it could not. China sphere of influence, mm-hmm. even. Right. I did a slightly better job there, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this sort of uh, philosophy of Juche, clearly this is the way we make Romania a world power, right? <laughs> Obviously. Ha- having, done, having done a lot of other mm. dumb stuff so far. Um, mm. First the metro, tomorrow the world. Ceausescu came back, delivered a speech now we call the July Theses, which is sort of a, a indication of a return to Stalinism. More like the July Theses, am I right? And nothing mm. went wrong. Nothing went wrong. No, I mean, that's why we all live today under a uh, glorious the glorious United workers States Socialist paradise, Republic. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> God, it's so funny that, to think about a, a time when uh, Juche was still being justified even by the Kims as a Stalinist philosophy. They don't bother with that now, is the main thing. Care about it. it they no. don't care about None of these communist countries care about communism. This is, <laughs> this is the unfortunate situation. It's like, well, you know, maybe you should just do some communism. Guys. Cuba, maybe. Cuba, maybe, yes. Crazy how that works, Roz. So the July theses involved um, a return to a sort of Stalinism, right? But Stal- more more Stalinism than Stalin did, right? Because um, mm. the thing about Stalin is he was a pussy and a cuss yes. and a beta. <laughs> yeah, so far, it sounds like Prager you to me. You know, the problem <laughs> is the problem is that we're not doing capitalism hard enough. You see? Yes. Mm. But what one of the fun ones was, um, you know, uh, as part of this uh, these July theses. Um, there were 17 of them, and I don't know what they are, except that one of them was that students are going to volunteer on construction projects. Oh, yeah, I, I know the sound of that. That happens to this day in Hungary, you know, when they actually, it, it happened the other day of like they asked a bunch of students to volunteer to, I don't know, do, be, I don't know, some kind of helpers at some kind of fucking conference that Orban likes. So this is actually a very, uh, this has a long and well, somewhat beautiful tradition in the Eastern oh, Bloc. Fuck me! I love to be getting a fucking like engineering degree in Hungary, and then be told that I have to go and suck off Tucker Carlson because the president <laughs> likes him. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we are like quote unquote volunteering now because the students are quote unquote so enthusiastic about you know helping George Soros cause. Securing a future for Hungarian children, etc., yes. etc. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Well, the, th- the the thing is, the thing is, having having identified all of the things that uh, the country needed to do in order to become a world power, the Third Rome, independent of uh, of both Moscow and Beijing, is uh, uh, Nikolai needed to turn on the big earthquake machine. Yes, which he did yeah. as soon as he got back immediately. Well, no, actually, six years afterwards. It was 1977. Well, it takes a long time to warm up, all right? It's got Nixie tubes in there. <laughs> so magnitude 7.2 earthquake um, gave him a, gave Ceausescu a nice pretext to start demolishing a huge amount of Bucharest, you know, for the sake of uh, rebuilding it in a sort of socialist, realist uh, fashion. Right. Mm. Um, Emphasis on the fash, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And what Trotsky did is actually called the uh, so called systematization, uh, which, well, uh, the, according to the definition, it's the demolition and reconstruction of existing hamlets, villages, towns, and cities in whole or in part with the stated goal of turning Romania into a multilaterally developed socialist society. And Soon we will see how that worked out. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, that. <clears throat> go ahead. Oh, I, I, I mean, like multilaterally developed. Uh, it sounds like <clears throat> some kind of um, corporate speak. Corporate speak. Yes, exactly. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're gonna we're gonna synergize Romania. Yeah, corporate speak, but your manager shoots you or something. Yeah, like I think it's just regular <laughs> corporate speak. <laughs> and that monstrosity we see in the background getting built. That unholy uh, Ozymandian uh, monument is 
what we'll be very soon talking about. It's coming, people. Winter is coming. Ooh. <laughs> and, and and other things with it in the December of 1989. Yeah, but first we're going to talk about two distinct artistic movements. <laughs> or I've heard autistic movements. Yeah, we got to talk about two distinct autistic movements: socialism and communism. Yes, uh, as I said, <laughs> as I said earlier, the spectrum of communism. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Alice. <laughs> All right, so uh, we need to talk about this concept of socialist realism, right? Mm. Um, and one of the one of the things about Soviet communism, in particular, which you know is 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 the conservatism of it, right? Oh yeah. Um, it it Soviet communism was very conservative, I guess, culturally, right? Um, and this was, well, this is the thing. You, you you had this sort of moment of opening. I, it's sort of like in the the early years of Bolshevik government, and then uh, Lenin sort of is a kind of ambiguous figure. Uh, uh, sort of like repressed some of this, sort of tolerated others, encouraged others. Uh, yes. But then the door firmly got shut in everyone's face when Stalin took over. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Um, no more weird shit. And Lenin no had like shit. allowed allowed some weird shit, like uh, for instance, uh, tolerating Arseny Avramov, the guy who said we should destroy every piano in Russia, uh, like a bunch of weird futurist art that was all wedges and shapes, and yes. like m more prosaically things like uh, you know educating women, giving women access to contraceptives, uh, legalizing homosexuality, just yes. regular. Cool stuff uh, that was then immediately shut back down in 1924. Yeah, I, I, it's it, and it was it was just you know it was it was an incredible period of art and architecture stuff like that. You know, you just imagine the optimism of that exciting new forms. You had you know constructivism, <laughs> right? You had futurism. You had suprematism, which is you know Casimir Malevich put, putting a square on a canvas. Um, <laughs> some 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 really truly unironically for ones dudes rock shit. Yes, mm. you know this is where I, uh, there, there, there's some people out there who say like the CIA is responsible for modern art and architecture, um, which I think is very strange because like the all the good stuff was in the early years of the USSR. Yeah. And you read like you read like oral histories of this period. There was a genuine air of like because it was so unexpected and it was so unprepared that it was fully the case that like uh, you know the, the the central government would send you to you know the fucking up the banks of the Yenisei or whatever and be like, okay, here are two pencils. Start a school for five thousand people. Yes, uh, <laughs> and, and and they did it. People did this stuff, and it sort of like it, it worked and it didn't and it was chaos and it was order but it was like a whole rich human tapestry uh and then uh not so much the, the yeah. art was good the art was so good <laughs> <laughs> and also one one factor which plays into this like the, the art flourishing is that in many cases there was like the artists uh were allowed to flourish and they could sort of uh really explore their creativity because they were not necessarily tied to the profit motive, meaning that, you know, you, you are not at risk of creating something that, that cannot sell and so you die of hunger. Yeah. So. And like even even at its most decrepit, right, the 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 empire still had enough of a grip on the reins of power that it could implement artistic censorship very easily and very effectively. Not so necessarily of the early days of, of, of the Bolsheviks. Like, yeah, okay, it was still possible for them to kill you, right? But like in terms of implementing a sort of like national policy of uh this is the guy who's gonna watch you work to make sure you don't get any weird ideas with it that was a few years off yet yeah and and and, and this flourishing of art sort of it comes to a stop when stalin comes to power right yeah when he um, poisons lenin allegedly yes uh, uh d d destroys and buries the the testament that lenin writes that says don't let stalin take power under any circumstances listen, allegedly I will not Tolerate Trotskyism on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we, I, I, I'm fine with being against Stalin, but no Trotskyism, please. All right. So Stalin is Stalin comes to power. He's basically he's 
you know, he's he's a communist, but he's also like a nationalist. Right. Yeah. And he's a terrible word- communist. If you've ever actually like one of the funniest interactions I've had with Tankies online was being told to read Stalin's theory. Right. Because I have. <laughs> and uh, let me tell you, this, this was this was not a theoretical communist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's well, he's the worst kind of nationalist. He's a convert because he's from Georgia, not Russia. Mm, you know, converts, the, man, I'm telling the you. Zealotry I mean, Hitler the convert, was Austrian, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Be, being sort of on the borderline uh, the but like borderlands of like acceptability, uh, you know, fucking destroying Osip Mandelstam for writing a sort of Russian chauvinist poem about him, <laughs> calling him like the uh, the, the Kremlin Caucasian. Good lord. <laughs> so this is this is sort of a, a state sanctioned style of art and architecture, the socialist realist style, right? It's it's representational. Uh it's supposed to be understandable to the workers. It was it was not high art. It was not something that you 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 had to think about, right? So you can sort of no, see in, in in some ways it approaches a sort of confluence with a lot of fascist art, where you end up with these sort of like monumental classical forms on the one hand, uh, but on the other you get this kind of like um really kitsch, nostalgic, uh sentimental uh sort of art. Yes. So we see here on the screen we've got a mosaic of Lenin in one of the Moscow metro stations. We have a uh, large classical building. I forget where this is. Um, we is it Petersburg? Is it? That sounds mm. about right. Yeah, um, I don't recognize it. We see here. And then, uh, and then the one painting that was allowed. The <laughs> one kind of painting that's allowed, which is the children giving Stalin some flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Again, de- deeply, deeply sentimental, deeply kitsch, deeply annoying, deeply parochial, uh, and like this is exactly the same kind of shit that the Nazis did too. Is like people, people remember the sort of like uh, the revolutionary aspect of fascist art, which is you know the sort of like giant Arno Breaker bronzes and stuff. Um, less so the kitsch, but like. Uh, if you look at things like the service stations that they put on the outer barn, it was like, oh, we're going to make this like a little chocolate box cottage <laughs> because that ref- that like reflects <laughs> German values. Um, <laughs> s- same yes. deal, same exact deal. Not not to do horseshoe theory here, but yeah, <laughs> same thing. <laughs> and with that, I'll be right back. One second. Oh. Uh, feel free to go on. By the way. It's your I'll, just, I'll, I'll just I'll just keep yelling about socialist realism. Yeah, we can just uh, start, we can yell about socialist realism for a while. I mean, you know, one of the things which I I, I think is very you know, it, as someone who kind of likes you know maybe what you would call traditional architecture, I yeah. I, I feel like this is this is um, not. Well, it, it's it, just not executed it, properly. It's like it has its the, moments. The, it has it, its mm, moments, it has, but there's well, not like a, a sort of. Um, I don't know how you explain it. It's, when it's the execution like, goes that extra mile, it can be. It can be very good. I love the the Moscow Metro, for instance. Um, uh, there are you know I, the, the apartment well, buildings, the Stalinkas, the, the actual the actual buildings that are built for the people. Mm-hmm. Are good, like the metro stations. Like, um, I remember Milo talking on Trash Future about the Stalinkas and just how absurdly overbuilt they are. Oh yeah, castles, <laughs> castles yes. for the proletariat. But it's like um, it's like these are actually these are buildings that are actually built for people to like live in and use, as opposed mm-hmm. to like you know the buildings which are. I don't know, some kind of they're 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 more monuments than buildings, right? Right. They're not yeah. it's not like this is not like a building for like the people. This is a building for like government. Well we, you know? we have a fantastic example of this on the next slide. Uh and, which uh, is yes. ne- ne- never built um the Palace of the Soviets. Yes. The, the like the big passion project because like I, again not to keep drawing the parallels but like uh impractically large monumental buildings that are like the new axis mundi uh like B- berlin was going to have the volkshalle uh mm-hmm. and and this you know moscow so was going to have, have the, the palace weather. of the soviets and the size of this isn't really conveyed properly by this drawing but it was like going to be 
gargantuan, right. like big impractically dick energy. Big dick energy. Energy. Yeah. Yeah. Taller, so yeah. I mean, there was a whole central plan That's a for meaty can opening. I really appreciated that. Um, yeah, no, the pa- the palace of the Soviets is like the best example of sort of like impractical, boring, even despite its size, yes. s- socialist realism. It was going to have this gigantic statue of Lenin on the top that was going to be like twice the height of the Statue of Liberty. So to conclude this slide, socialist realism was kind of goofy, it was dumb, it was an anachronism, right? And by the 50s, Khrushchev, with his sort of denunciation of Stalin, Khrushchev managed to, you know, get rid of the, the, the sort of socialist realist style as the um, official style of the Soviet Union, right? Yeah. Um, without, without really getting rid of the sort of conservatism or the nostalgia, which is a fascinating trick he pulled. Yes, I, uh, yeah, I mean, the Soviet Union is weird. <laughs> so, a, a series, a series of tragedies. Yes, yeah, series of tragedies, yes. We could have had socialism if not for the Soviet Union. <laughs> 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 so, Ch- Chesko decided that, you know, here in the modern world of the 1980s by this point, it was time to bring back socialist realism, right? Mm. Um, so, you know, and it's, it's, um, that, that, that's the palace of the Soviets that I was talking about. The Soviets, yeah. I have one real quick comparison to draw here, which is this, this is what socialism, socialist realism gets you or, or doesn't because it's like a swamp now. Um, oh. the, the original, the original plan for this site was, uh, the Tatlin tower, which was this insane, uh, sort of like, uh, what if the Eiffel tower was made by the dang Joker? Kind of futurist <laughs> thing yes. with a bunch of like really twisted steel and really interesting forms uh, that that truly would have said a lot about our society. And then instead of doing that, they 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 tried to do this. They started laying the foundations for it, and then World War Two happened, and uh, they did not build. Well, so many architects <laughs> yeah. like entered the competition to build the Palace of the Soviets, right? Oh, yeah. um, you know, Le Corbusier was involved. You had um. That was the big one. Um, I don't remember who else. Uh, Tatlin's Tower, I thought, was uh, definitely the most interesting one because Tatlin's Tower involved like this, uh, this sort of um, it was a mechanical sculpture as well as a government building um, mm. because you know you would have uh, <clears throat> the lower house at the bottom would be in the cube and the cube would rotate once a day, and then you have the upper house which would be in a sphere and the sphere rotated. Once, uh, once a month, and then you had the uh, the upper half, which is, I think, a, a pyramid, and the pyramid rotated. Um, once right, it's a like year. if, um, <laughs> uh, ironically, given who's like you know opposed to Corbusier, uh, if a house is a machine for living, this was like a machine for governing. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yes, and and just to add a little something uh, to this. Uh, to this uh, sort of idea in the, in the slide, uh, you see uh, th- throughout the Eastern Bloc, you sometimes see these gigantic, you know, monuments of shit, just like Soviet things, you know, the, 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 the big dick energy stuff. Like here, the Palace of the Soviets in Warsaw, the, the like the Stalin's skyscraper. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, 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 and funny enough, Hungary doesn't have something like that, thank God. Anyway, the, <laughs> in, in Romania, as we will soon see, we have this something which we'll be discussing. But uh, the strange thing about the Soviet Union is, is ultimately a big part of the reason why it fell apart is that while these huge prestige projects uh, went on, um, well, basic necessities and just like, just like basic commodities were uh, struggling, so to speak, or the state was struggling to provide them. Uh, so, for example, uh, a, an example I want to bring up is buying a car. So during the second half, uh, second half of the 20th century, uh, how did you buy a car in the US? Like they basically like threw it after you, right? So it, it wasn't yeah. particularly hard to get one. Whereas in the Eastern Bloc, the way you got a car was you first off, first off you signed up uh, by paying the paying part of the of the money or the or the or, or the whole thing, and then you waited. You were put on a waiting list, and um, you waited for years to get your car. And you looked at the newspaper every week to see the names of who will get their cars this week, 
uh, and hopefully your name was among them. And it reminds you- me of another Soviet joke. Uh, Go ahead. A man puts in his order to buy, uh, you know, say a Zaprojets or whatever. Um, I think I know he, this one. He, he, he buys a car and, and, and the guy tells him, okay, it'll be with you in 10 years. Um, uh, 10 years exactly, this date. And, and the guy says, oh, in the morning or the afternoon? And the salesman looks at him and he says, well, why, why would you need to know that? And the guy says, oh, the plumber's coming in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that is the one I thought it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's also a very, very good and very indicative joke, actually, of how of the state of affairs. And so, but the but just waiting waiting years for your car wasn't the only thing, actually. So once you waited like five, six years to to get your fucking Trabant or or Warburg or Zaporozhets or mm-hmm. or you know Polsky or something, once you got it, um, you had one more task in front of you. You had to take it to a friendly mechanic that you knew and just and you entrusted, and shell out a ton of money, like a month's salary or something, for the mechanic to reinstall everything that was stolen out of the car in the factory. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> and with that, next slide, please. <laughs> All right. Mm. So yes, it's it's coming. It's coming at you full speed. Yes, mm. it's, it's the people's palace. It's the oh, people's yeah. palace. Uh, and spo- spoiler alert: our our boy Ceausescu will not live to see this building completed. Yeah. Oh, what a sh- what a shame! <laughs> what a shame! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, well, well let, let's see why uh, soon. <laughs> anyway, so Ross wrote here that this is the biggest goddamn thing ever, and I'm inclined to agree. And. This thing broke down, broke, broke down, uh, broke <laughs> ground. In, it's well, been almost. broke down the whole time it's been up. Yeah, base, oh yeah, just, just like the country. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this thing broke ground in 1984, you know, it's, it's the, it's oh, the like thing the that, book. you know, yeah, yeah George, George, George Orlando was 1968 that conservatives <laughs> like to quote. <laughs> and um, the thing was actually finished after the revolution in 1997. Now. Can you guess the number of architects that worked on it? For for those of you who don't have the notes in front of you. Well, there is one of them in the picture on the right, so I'm going to yeah. guess one. So that's one, and there were also 699 more. Huh. <laughs> and, like a, a little a little battalion of architects. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Who have to who have to be at the beck and call of the orders of the genius of the Carpathians. So. You know. the, the, the the nominal lead architect Anka Petrescu, who is on on the on the right picture there, uh, twenty eight years old at the time that they started building this. Ah, uh, yeah. That's well, because, because uh, yeah. they they support women in Romania. Yeah, yeah. Ceausescu, they really supported women. And some girl <laughs> boss energy right there. Yes. That's right. And this whole thing, the whole building, by the way, costed about four point seven billion US dollars. On today's course, I believe. So it's you know it's a little big chungus building. It's, uh, it's <laughs> uh, a good sized building. I mean, it's, it has the same number of stories below ground as above ground, if I recall correctly. Yeah. So the building is twelve floors high and is so 84, 84 meters tall. And eight. Well, wait. Well, okay. Wait a second. We, we have Americans here, so meter to yeah what's that in what's that in burgers in hamburgers yeah. that's 275 hamburgers <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's a pretty it's a pretty tall building can you guess the floor space of this thing i'm terrible at estimating floor space i just like whenever i whenever i'm renting an apartment i just let them yeah me too it's not fair but so the the floor space the floor space is 365,000 square meters or 3,930,000 square feet the number of rooms in this thing is 1100 oh well you know, so yeah, you know, just sh- showing people around my 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 four plus one thousand ninety six apartment. You know, <laughs> Romania is a complex country. It needs a lot of administration. That's right. Just it requires that though. many rooms. 
rooms. Yeah. yeah. All, all, all that all that that high quality governance needs a lot of room, lots of room to do, you know, functions. Yes. Needs to needs to fit Ceausescu's enormous brain inside it. So <laughs> Exactly. I read something from a uh a, a I forget I forget who the journalist was who met Ceausescu once who said that Ceausescu when he sat down in front of him had the most enormous balls huh <laughs> Just, yeah, man. gigantic huge that explains everything visible <laughs> through the pants <laughs> <laughs> incredible oh god the stallion of the Carpathians mm. <laughs> <laughs> and this was this was going to house every ministry of Romanian government no, at the same time, balls, yes. just and his balls, balls actually, and, and his, his balls. massive one wing <laughs> for the left nut, <laughs> one wing for the right nut, one wing for every other government ministry. Uh, and so this building has some relevant titles. Um, this is this building is, which is an absolute monstrosity, by the way, absolutely. This is the world's largest civilian building with an administrative function. It is the world's most expensive administrative building. So, you know, Andrew Cuomo can get some ideas. And it is also the world's heaviest building. And because of that, I hear that it's actually sinking by around five or six millimeters per year. Oh, I identify with it now. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> And it's also the dumbest fucking thing ever built in Romania. Mm -hmm. That's not an official title. I just I just wrote it there because I think that. So. <laughs> I do love the the sort of like architectural model that they have of it here. It's, it's very cute. charming. Yeah. Yeah. The the, 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 the little uh, D D Dracula castle roofs did not make it into mm -hmm. the final uh, plans, but it would look a lot better with the uh, the, the the peaked roof, though. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Even on that scale, I'm not sure though. No, I mean like, the, the the my biggest issue with this building is it looks like shit. Mm. It looks fucking it, terrible. It is an ugly building. <laughs> I mean, it looks it's, really bad. I mean, it's, it's 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 like Romania, you know. It was you know. What can you do? Well, on on the plus side, uh, much like um, uh, Guy de Maupassant dining in the Eiffel Tower because it was the one place in Paris he didn't have to look at the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> One place you don't have to look at uh, the People's Palace is from inside it. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you do have to look at is the interior. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of, it's, a, sort of a communist Versailles, but also depressing. like... It's it's It's, it's it, like if Versailles yeah. was built as a train station. <laughs> um, it's not... It's... Because it's not like a, a building that like... Has a public purpose. It's for government, no. right? Yes. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's not particularly attractive. Yeah, it's just like it's like a mega mansion, but on on a, on a government level, essentially. Um, there's not enough color, um, because it's, it's white and gold. Um, mm, that symbolizes opulence, Roz. Listen, <laughs> yeah, listen. You're not you're not correct about this. This is just a bad implement. And much like the Soviet Union, the ideology isn't the problem. It's only the implementation. Yes. <laughs> it's just it's 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 bad. It's like not not interesting. It's not like there's sort nothing of, there's nothing going on here that I I like so, sort of know. gives you a toothache to look at. It looks like a big wedding cake. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Charles Chesco came in, it's like, okay. I'm the genius of the Carpathians, and here's what we're gonna build. Louvre, <laughs> but depressed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Got a next so, slide here, just of the, the so main the, staircase the here. Staircase, yeah. And Which, it has this sterile, mm. it, it's, it's like, it's, it has this sort of classical, but sterile look. So it's, it's, it's sterile, like, like this, like this, uh, this government office from the, 1970s rural Russia, where like all the employees are like suicidal, <laughs> but it's also <laughs> classical and it's such a weird sort of disharmony. It's bizarre. Mm. Yeah, and it's um, it's it's all it's all white, right? So yeah. there's like no no sort of. The, the, it's also made entirely from Romanian materials, as I understand mm. it, because again, we're trying to do Romanian juche. Yeah. Right? yeah. But it's also like there, there's, 
I don't know. There's something. There's something wrong with it. <laughs> it's all. It's all out of proportion. It feels like sort of like dream logic, you know. No, the proportions are great. The proportions are so? all exactly right. That's the thing that I think is weird about it is because you know the proportions are correct. Everything is correct academically, but there's something wrong here. <laughs> I think I think it's because they just they just like piled the ornamentation on top of each other like it's just like ornamentation on top of ornamentation it just it just goes on and it it, it it just like this this uh this 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 style never lets you catch a break mm. like everywhere you look it's always something it's always like it, it always has to scream into your face how how great it is how exceptional it is and that's because it was designed by some dumb fuck so you know it's 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 very overstimulating isn't it exactly there's an like intent. good good, good in sorry go ahead there's an intent behind the architecture is the thing mm. I, I, maybe I, I i don't know how you describe it but like there's there's an intent here and it was um you know you're trying malicious. to do it, yeah, it, it is it, it, it is, is the malicious wrong it's the wrong intent yeah. and it hasn't it hasn't aged into its new purpose no, see, either. See, see because, people, you know, people, people think hostile architecture, and they think that means exclusively like spikes over subway get grades, which is you know one example. This is mm. hostile architecture too. Yeah, but subtle. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, this this building would look nice if not for the 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 uh, suff suffocating amount of ornamentation plus. If you decriticizing it, you know, like behind that beautifully crafted, uh, you know, staircase leading upwards to, you know, the higher level of, level of existence or something, behind that are are five securitate officers who will just fucking, you know, drag you off to the gulag if you dare to give him a dirty look. So, I have a I have a view in the next slide because I wrote that slide of the the aerial shot of this. Which really uh, just just oh take it God. in, just just take, just it, take in. it in. It's just this big sort of tumor, just like the stretching oh, into the fabric of the city. It looks like it's been like anchored in at the corners. Uh, yeah, and the, the building, like the plan, is not good. Like starting from starting from like the the the, the beginning, like the plan of the building is not good. Like mm. you 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 don't you've hire done twenty eight year olds. You've taken. This whole sort of classical architecture, like you, you've applied all the right rules to the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah. And, like, spoiler alert, because we're going to talk about this in a couple of slides' time, but uh, yeah, the, Romania is no longer a communist country. It is a de democratic um, uh, The current The governing ideology of Romania is... Uh, uh, yeah, anyway, so... Um, uh, you, well, <laughs> after, after, after communism, or after Ceausescuism, uh, the new guys go well. Okay, what are we? What are we going to do with this thing? Do we like leave it half done? Do we demolish it? And what they do is they finish it. Um, they they finish construction of this because you know you're already most of the way there. What else um, are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. and, and then the, having <laughs> having like capped it out, having finished it, they go shit. What the fuck are we going to do with the world's heaviest building? Dracula play place. It, it's, an order of magnitude larger than like even the most authoritarian Romanian government could have possibly used it for. Um, I, I was reading about the, um, uh, it was like the speaker of the, the Chamber of Deputies of Romania talked about his, his office. Once he got into it, he had to order a smaller desk because the size of his desk was upsetting him. Yes. <laughs> and and what, 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 he, what he got, what, what he got was an, a desk that was like larger than the largest one you could get. Like it had to be custom made and it was still half the size of the one that the office came with. <laughs> uh, so, oh god, yeah. Uh, so, with, with, hmm. with, 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 with these megalomaniac buildings, like, uh, there's, there's, oh god, uh, I'm sorry, just something came into mind. Like, when uh, in Berlin, there used to be this chancellor, chancellery building, which was then blown up by the Soviets, ironically. Hmm. Uh, but uh, that was designed by this, by this 
mad architect of, of Nazi Germany who was like kind of like a genius um, so to, to some extent. And it was also this like gargantuan building, but not like not to this extent. But the way I, I just remember this, I, th- I think I think it's interesting trivia. Uh, to like, he had to build this enormous fucking building in like one or two years, like r- like a super short time. So what he did was, he looked at the rooms and said, okay, how uh, w- what is the most time consuming thing to be done here? The carpets. Okay, so he uh, submitted the orders for the carpets. Uh, and then design the rooms around the carpets because back then the carpets need to be handmade and it took a lot of time. So this, I believe, this same energy uh, was present here during the building of this thing in front of us, which looks like the microchip that Bill Gates will put on your put in your brain with the COVID vaccination. <laughs> but like, I, I did not know about the about the desk part, so that yeah. actually surprised me. The, the, they go through a few iterations of things that maybe we can we can do with this, in, in part because like uh, yeah, the new liberal democratic capitalist Romania is also quite strapped for cash. Uh, so a, a sort of a revenue-seeking thing. They they consider uh, like making it into a casino. That doesn't work. Uh, well. th- they th- they try making it into a mall, and that that also doesn't work. Um, Rupert Murdoch tr- offers to buy it for a billion dollars, uh, and they is, t- is he the Fox News guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. and oh, they, okay. they, they they turn him down because they think they can hold out for more. Um, <laughs> 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 I have I ha- I have this in, in good authority. I can cite my sources on this one. Uh, mm. That uh, it's seriously considered at one point to try and turn this into a Dracula theme park. Based. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're here. That, you're, that was what I was rooting for. The horrible. You're here in a horrible. Um, the horrible Dracula. Um. Mm. What's Castle region? Thunder is playing the whole time. Welcome to Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I saw the stats on this. Uh, this building has only been at most 30% occupied. Um, y- y- you could play a fantastic game of hide and seek here. There's, oh, so- there's, there's going to be shit in these offices nobody knows about, too. Yes. I mean, it sounds like the World Trade Center so far. <laughs> it reminds me a lot of Philadelphia City Hall. Mm-hmm. Um, just by being way really larger than big. it needs to be. Yeah, a statue like, of John Hancock you know, on the There top. are some uh, city. statue some of parallels. William Penn. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there were so, there was a there have been multiple instances of uh, people being discovered living in abandoned offices in Philadelphia City Hall. <laughs> oh, there's there's got to be people living in this under the radar, yeah. Absolutely, um, yeah. Mm, but, but what ultimately happens is that inertia wins. Uh, it, it it now houses both uh, both chambers of Romania's parliament, um, and they they have no use for it. It's just yes. that they're, they're stuck with it. They're the consumer of last resort ever since they turned <laughs> down Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> yeah, one of the weird things is like the big Parliament Hall, which I believe is this guy right here. Yeah. Um, so they finished the exterior before they finished the interior. Um, it's been finished in a very postmodern style. Um, I don't have a picture here, but it's um, you know, you one of these sort of like um, uh, like more sort of collaborative, big curved benches kind of parliaments. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, taste and Eastern Europe. Don't do not always go hand in hand. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Uh, Let's have good public transport links, as we'll see in the next slide. Uh, yes. Yeah. So this is this picture is the bus stop next to the palace, and the if you look closely, the uh, little uh, the little sign over there says that it's it is indeed the um, <laughs> Palace Parlementului. And yeah, so I, I believe this picture illustrates the sort of land of contrasts, to borrow a phrase. Um, <laughs> and there, there was there was Romania, then, and that it then uh, and what it what is Romania to this day, to some extent at least. And um, so you you have these big bullshit projects, these little these little big 
Sigma male, <laughs> whatever, obelisks of shit. And next to it, the basic public services are just kind of like struggling. Mm. And as a, as a bonus, if you look in the uh, top left corner, you can see these like sort of random balconies built in with these sort of haphazard uh, glazing on it. Well, that's because uh, that, that is sort of, that is rather common in countries like Romania, Moldavia, Ukraine, Belarus. And that's because no meaningful reforms were done in the housing sector, as in, you know, uh, it wasn't regulated and people can just build whatever the fuck they want out uh, on these houses. Sometimes they collapse because of it. Sometimes they somehow don't. Oh, well. But the thing is that the the focus of the governments uh, in the Soviet era before the revolutions and sometimes even after it was this sort of inward looking uh, projecting our own glory and sort of not giving a shit about basic public services, which, you know, we should have done. So this, this bus stop symbolizes, I think that truth. Mm. And with that, we're going to get into this spicy stuff. So, you know, next yeah, slide, please. I, I hear you ask, but what happened to this Nikolai Ceausescu guy? What, oh. what, 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 what was, what was his deal? What, what, what happened? To Nikolai and Elena Ceausescu. Gee shucks, am I excited to tell you. <laughs> uh, Alice, could I get the drop, please? Hi, my name is Nikolai Ceausescu, and you might be wondering how I ended up in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> so, the question, what happened here? And the answer is, a Hungarian pastor gave an interview. Never let them do that. Big mistake. <laughs> exactly. So, um, over here we see, on this picture, we see the, the uh, execution of the Church of School couple by a firing squad in 1989, December. And so, this whole thing, uh, I, I'm going to run you through it because it's super interesting. So, the last Lotukish was a Hungarian sort of Protestant pastor who organized against systematization, which was, as we discussed, this, this destructive uh, urban planning practice of Ceausescu, where he just like leveled entire historic centers to build out the supposed ideal socialist um, sort of town. And this pastor, Laszlo Turkish, gave an interview to the Hungarian television, so not the Romanian, but the Hungarian one. And uh, this happened in like July 1989, but the thing was aired in like December <laughs> or October. Like, anyway, uh, fall slash winter. And the Romanian uh, government responded this, re responded to this by accusing uh, Turkish uh, of being anti-Romanian, and they uh, deprived him of his pastor pastoral uh, title. And so, because of that, uh, legally, he had to move out of his apartment because his apartment was sort of uh, assigned to him based on his work. So, he was about to be evicted, and there was a big support in front of, uh, like, uh, for him, in support of him, in front of his house and uh, the area. So, this was on the 16th of December, 1989. And, um, you know, because everyone is, at this point, everyone is kind of like fed up with, with, uh, with Ceausescu's austerity program. And uh, they are also kind of fed up with the uh, with the uh, systematization, and so Laszlo Turkish gave voice to something which everyone kind of like felt, but he was the one to to like sort of uh, uh, bring bring those concerns to real life, so to speak. And so on the sixteenth of December, there was this big protest in favor of him, and the Securitate, the Romanian sort of uh, well secret police, I guess, tries to crack down on it. But the whole sort of uh, the whole conflict spread rather quickly through a, across the entire country because it turns out not just the local Hungarians have had enough of the or had had enough of the Ceausescu regime, and within one day the situation got so bad that the Securitate basically could not handle it anymore. The army had to be involved. <laughs> and <laughs> right, so and and two day, people were, were, were rather fed up with George at this point, who built out a personal cult uh, based on the North Korean one. Yeah, so that 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 will <laughs> that, that usually doesn't end well. And so two days later, 
two days after the army got involved and, you know, things are kind of going to shit, but, you know, it's still under control. The Minister of Defense dies under mysterious circumstances after refusing Ceausescu's orders, uh, personal orders, to open fire at the protesters with live ammunition, of course. Hmm. And... uh, of course, and then the, the guy dies, and as the joke goes, you know, like the, the guy died uh, uh, of suicide with like five shots in the back from fifty meters away. So you know, <laughs> and, and uh, of course, and his death, he he was, he was actually a liked and, and respected member of the of the establishment uh, by the soldiers anyway, and his death actually caused mass defections in the army, so the whole system uh, sort of sort of started dissolving. And this this cumulated in Ceausescu's famous last speech, when like it was the first instance when the crowd actually turned against him, and he was just kind of like he was like he was like a, a toddler who was just kind of like lost in a supermarket, you know, he just <laughs> had no no idea what's going on because you know he's been he's been living in a bubble, and now you know it's it's just this you know earth and sky kind of difference, and so. After following, like he, he he tried to calm the crowd down. He had like rallies, TV addresses, etc. Didn't work, and things were getting out of hand rather quickly. And so we are at the we are at the palace, the big dumb building we've been talking about so far. And uh, well, he needs to be evacuated because people are kind of like people are seeping into the building. You know, the bodyguards cannot hold them back. And um, around noonish. Uh, Ceausescu's personal uh, helicopter pilot gets a message that he needs to go immediately to the People's Palace to pick up Ceausescu. And, okay, he flew there and he saw that he could not land on a square because it was full of people. And there's people climbing on the balcony where where Ceausescu was holding speeches beforehand. And uh, after that, so the, 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 <laughs> the helicopter pilot saw someone wave this, like, white curtain out of one window signaling where he should land and he landed actually and the bodyguards brought out the church school couple who were just like petrified with like shock and fear at that point because you know once the people catch up with them they're like you know they're gonna end up on a lamppost at that point <laughs> and they knew that <laughs> And so the the Ceausescu's, together with uh, like two Securitate officers, were evacuated from the palace by helicopter to a safe house near Bucharest, to the north by like 50 kilometers or so. And uh, there, the Ce- Ceausescu, Nicolae Ceausescu ordered his pilot to uh, get in touch with his unit commander. And he did. And Ceausescu ordered the unit commander to order additional helicopters with armed guards to where he is. To you know, be a presidential sort of uh, escort, and the unit commander responded with the following: "There has been a revolution. You are on your own. Good luck." <laughs> so, <laughs> so, That's so okay, so things things were going to shit pretty fast, and like you know, faster than expected, as you can tell. Uh, and so at this point, Ceausescu ordered the pilot to take them even further away from the capital. And uh, to to this uh, specified place, which was this safe zone or slash safe house, and on the way, the the pilot, the pilot was was also kind of fed up with this whole thing, and so he, the pilot, made the helicopter sort of dip up and down, and he told Ceausescu that he was doing it because uh, he wants he wanted to avoid the incoming anti air fire. Which of course no one was shooting at a helicopter, but it, but but the pilot was just fucking with Ceausescu at that point. But <laughs> this this made Ceausescu panic actually, and ordered an immediate landing. And so the pilot landed uh, on an, on on this agricultural field next to a road, and and then told the Ceausescu's that he could do nothing more. <laughs> as far as he's concerned, that was it. You must live amongst the people. Exactly, and they did. Terrifying and the secu- for a communist leader. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so to 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 uh, try wh- how what it's like to live among the people, the Securitate officers uh, who were still with them uh, flagged down. They actually managed to flag down two cars on the road. Uh, one of which was a countryside doctor in a red Dacia car who who actually who who wasn't particularly happy about having to drive the Ceausescu's, which he did in the end. So on the way, as he was driving them. 
uh, he faked an engine breakdown and stopped on the roadside. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I, I, I'm just fucking done with this shit, whatever. And um, the He's second that they all... <laughs> just getting getting the sense of an entire nation that is very much done with this guy's shit. You 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 just wait. Imagine if you had to pick up Barack Obama on the side of the road. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and you're like, no, get out of my car. <laughs> yeah. um, how, how will I get to the um, nearer settlements? Um, well, the, 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 the free market will take care of it, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, the Third Amendment comes in at the end as the hero we knew it would. <laughs> I will not quarter Barack Obama in my car. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the, 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 the security officers actually managed to flag down a, 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 a third car. This time it was a bicycle repairman. Who actually managed? Who actually yeah. agreed to drive them to a nearby town? Uh, and on the way, uh, as, as they were driving there, the bicycle repairman managed to convince the Ceausescu couple uh, that they can hide at the local agricultural complex because it was because it was a safe spot. And so, upon arrival, the director of the agricultural complex uh, let welcomed the Ceausescu couple and led them into a room, and then locked them in. Uh -oh. Man, Shortly after, <laughs> local police came and picked, picked up the two and transported them to a nearby military compound when they were tried in a few days and then, of course, put in front of this firing squad. And this was the end of the Ceausescu couple, their reign, and, you know, the... All this because the man <laughs> failed a speech check. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, you, exactly. you, you see, you see the footage of him like speaking from the balcony, and that like you can see him lose control of it yeah. in real time, and you're just like, mm. yeah. and him going like, "Hello, hello," and people are just like, you know, whatever, fuck you. <laughs> I think he, I think he offered them like a, a, a five to ten percent pay rise. Uh, yeah, th yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I can't afford food, but <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he offered to raise workers' salaries by 200 lei per month, yeah. uh, which is about uh, $19. Nice. And uh, fun wow. fact though, the big part of the protesters were, were uh, workers who came to the capital to, stri to uh, protest after striking. It was miners mostly, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A big, big part of it was miners, yes. Hmm. So do drug. Yeah. yeah. And uh it, it never never got to see his his big beautiful palace. Uh, too bad. Well yeah. there there's well but Ellis, did you know there's an even bigger and even more beautiful palace next to it? Really? Oh, yes. Which is getting built. Right now. <laughs> Why? Do you want do you want a do you want a big Ooh. Orthodox church? Oh yeah. <sighs> That's what you want. It's so thick. It's 35 <laughs> meters taller than the palace is. Yes. Um, and this is, this is Orthodoxy's revenge, more or less explicitly, for the five churches that Ceausescu had uh, destroyed in order to build his palace. Yeah. Because uh, ortho <laughs> Orthodoxy gets pretty intense about martyrdom, you may be aware of this. Uh, so they, 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 the, the church in Romania considered these churches to have been uh, metaphorically crucified. It's kind of a big deal to them, and so it's as so a consequence, flakes. yeah. <laughs> and so as a consequence, they have uh, they have built this or are building this massive cathedral immediately next door as an own. Yes, well, I'm sure this is the most immediate urbanistic need of uh, Bucharest. That's right, and yes. you know there there are absolutely no lessons about hubris and building. <laughs> Massive <laughs> structures oh, here. <laughs> oh yeah, well we can do it bigger, dumbass. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> There's a lesson. Our dig's bigger. America number one. <laughs> it's the only thing that can defeat communism: religion. <laughs> <laughs>
The last gas yeah, of the, the only thing we can defeat religion, communism. We gotta build an even bigger, even taller, even more communist <laughs> thing. And then, when they kill our guy again, and they build a gigantic, <laughs> even larger second cathedral next to that, we just gotta keep going until eventually we have a kind of, like, gradient upwards. Or yes. the, 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 the orthodox space elevator. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not to be confused with the Jewish space laser, of course. By the way, is Liam is Liam still with us? Yes. I haven't heard him. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh. Liam? Yes. Liam. He's dead. Oh well. Can you not uh -huh. hear me? I've been talking this entire time. It's very unfortunate. No, Liam's gone. <laughs> Liam, Liam has been martyred in the cause of this podcast. Um, <laughs> Which we, is we, why we, we commemorate... will build the Christian space laser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have literally been talking this entire time. Oh my god. And I haven't dude. been on mute. So I've just uh, been recording locally and I was wondering why I kept getting talked over. Oh man. Oh, oh buddy. And and Zencaster was showing fine and Audacity was showing fine. That's insane. That's really fucking annoying. Okay. That, that's that's not so good. Yeah. Yeah. I have my yeah, local, we'll, so if you can just, I guess, splice it yeah, together. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just edit in yeah, we'll some Liam. Yeah, that's, uh, wow, that's annoying. Yeah, no, I've been with you the whole time. Or we, we can we can publish a second version of the podcast with, like, the, the Liam Anderson developer commentary. Yeah. Release the Liam cut. The Liam cut. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just me saying Roz sucks butt for two hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, we were on all sorts of drugs when we were uh, premiering this. You know, I don't, I don't. <laughs> making the band, but it's just me. Wow, this is going to go into the history books as the episode where we 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 lost the host for the entirety of the thing. And this the is, host yeah. didn't know it, and just no. thought his co-hosts were being very rude by I, talking I, over. I, I, I have no mouth, and I must pod. <laughs> This is the most anti-Semitic pod we've ever done. Yeah, that's true. This is this is this is quite possibly the hardest we have fucked up logistically recording one of these since the time we had to record the same episode three times. I'm just glad that I wasn't being ignored. No, no, no. I was I was no, wondering, Liam, but like I was it. like, oh, I don't want to call attention to no, it in case no, no. You fucking I, died. The second I refreshed Zen, because I could hear all of you the entire time. And my Zencaster, like I said, showed totally normal, like it was picking up on my sound, everything healthy. Uh, luckily, obviously, I was on Audacity, or we'd be totally fucked. Mm. There's some stuff I, I said about, now that, uh, now that I'm back, I guess, there's some stuff I, I had said about, you guys were talking about sort of power, uh, free absolute power. Mm. And like, even if you don't start goofy, it makes you goofy by the end of it. We were talking about on Lions about the guy whose name I shamefully can't remember of the Central African Republic who decided he was Napoleon. Oh, um, uh, Bokasa, I want to yeah, say? Bokasa. Hmm. And, yeah. Just off I, the dome. How yeah. fucking smart am I? Yeah. Good job, Alice. Right. Thank you. Thank God I wasn't <laughs> being ignored. My anxiety is returning to normal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I'm like a dancing clown. I need to be at the center of attention at all times because I'm an only child, and my, uh, <laughs> you know, this is my whole life. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I do think it's funny that like, I, I do think it's true that absolute power, like, no matter, like, if one of us got absolute power, we'd be, we'd be fucking just absolutely off our rockers, insane. Roz oh, would be building, so normal now. Yeah, Roz, Roz would be building a GG1 out of solid gold. <laughs> like, like real weird shit. I would right. build a nicer building than um, the palace. I of the like people. it! See, that was the other thing, is that I, I, I unironically like this hunk of shit. I think it's kind of neat. Like, obviously it's horrible, but like, no, it's, so you it's have a bad said, building. It's you a have bad said, building. You have said to my face that Philadelphia City Hall is ugly. But you like it. No, you it is ugly, and I like it, yes. <laughs> this is different. The web of lies becomes untangled. <laughs> There's a way in which Second Empire is an objectively ugly style. Oh, I love Second Empire. I'll put that shit right in my veins. No, Second Empire is ugly, and no, yet I, I like it. I want the last gasp of a dying republic, On which is why podcast, I live in America. We have a segment that we like to call 
Safety no, third. I'm making up for lost time. This is Liam show now. Safety third. This is Liam show now, motherfuckers. Nope. Shake hands. Don't with shake me. hands with Liam. It's still going. <laughs> shake hands with Liam. <laughs> shake hands with Liam. <laughs> shake hands with Liam. <laughs> <laughs> I will do that on this whole podcast. I am making up for lost time. So welcome That's back. It. To, welcome back, back to, to Winnipeg. Winnipeg. <laughs> well, there's your Liam. A podcast about Liam with slides. Hosted by me, Liam Anderson, and my co-host, Alice Liam caldwell Kelly and Justin Liam Yak. Our pronouns are Liam. Yay, Liam. All right, I'm good. I'm good. Go ahead. Yeah, I was, I, was, I, was actually, I was actually wondering if, if like, if this, if this is, like, part of some kind of, like, so, like smooth letdown of Liam, of, like, yeah, Liam, we were, we're, we're cutting you from the podcast, Adam is a new Liam. <laughs> Like, we're downsizing <laughs> you by like cutting your mic for five minutes more each episode yeah. until yeah. you notice. Oh, uh, that'd be fun because sometimes I don't listen to the episodes we record, and I would, I uh, like that could that that could go on. For oh a yeah, while. we would ju- just like as, as a means of gaslighting you. That's that's powerful. <laughs> yeah, the last thing you want to do is listen to a podcast. That you're I on. don't listen. <laughs> I just, exactly. you know, it's not a format I particularly enjoy. Listen. The guy who makes his living recording these says. <laughs> <laughs> There's a segment mm. on this podcast called Safety Third. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Hello, well, there's a <laughs> the problem. Hello. I've been enjoying your podcast on my afternoons off for a long time no, now. We and sure I must put say, an end to that tonight. Yeah, sorry, buddy. <laughs> You idiots go down well with a few glasses of oh. mint julep. Oh. <laughs> hey, fuck you too, man. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they call me a cutting linguist, but that's not I the just, point. I just remembered the name of Emperor Bacasa I, just off the top of my fucking head. <laughs> well, today I didn't have any bullet, so I actually oh, remember. bullets? I have oh, a great no. safety third for y'all. Come on, dude. <laughs> Have some respect for yourself. I tried to simplify the chemistry <laughs> involved, so even the city planners listening will understand just how much stupid <laughs> took place here. I don't know, man. You're the one not drinking, like, uh, Woodford Reserve. I like Woodford <laughs> Reserve. I know it's just fancy Buffalo Jack. Buffalo Trace. Uh, no, I'm saying things I like. 101. The Eagle only rare. legitimate bourbon. Eagle mm. Rare. I do like Eagle Rare. I just can't fucking find it anymore. Yeah, you can't get it anymore. Yeah, exactly. Uh, You Um, can get it at the state store at 11th and Filbert. They keep it behind the counter. No one ever buys it. Back when I was in college, I needed a way to make money for booze. Oh, no. And (laughs) the occasional textbook. As I have a body made for radio and a voice made for text, prostitution and podcasting were out of the question. So I had to hey, get. We can fucking do it, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. I had Sigma to get energy. <laughs> so I had to get a job. Oh, sorry. Luckily, the school I used to go to had a position open for an assistant lab tech, and I already had enough chemistry qualifications to apply. Now, here's how things were meant to work: a chemistry teacher with qualifications in chemistry, plans a chemistry lesson well in advance of the date they need to teach it. They then hand any planned demonstrations and associated paperwork to lab tech in the chemistry preparation room. They would check that the planned reaction was safe and modify the protocol as required. Justin, are you, are you doing like a, a, a shot of bullet in between sentences? Yeah, what are you doing there, bud? <laughs> <laughs> no. Do you want me to read oh, this one? Okay. Finally, an assistant lab tech would oh, be time to prep pants. the glassware, the chemicals, etc. ready for the lesson. Now, here's how things actually worked. A biology teacher with qualifications in English literature would remember <laughs> mm. that they had a chemistry lesson to teach the next day. Storm into the prep room with some crayon drawings, some poorly done maths, and expect the first person they find to be able to make it work. The main lab tech always seemed to schedule his break at just the right time to miss this shit show. So... <laughs> 
inevitably I would have to do all the work. I was going to guess our hero is not going to be this lucky, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, for every poor child who was being forced to sit within the, spa- the splash zone of these idiotic teachers, I was actually good at my job. If a teacher, high and mighty upon their pecking order, would question my correcting their dangerous protocol into a safe one or argue that they knew what they were doing, I would simply tell them, you know how Timmy's mother always makes your parent-teacher nights a motherfucking nightmare uh, because you marked down poor Timmy a point for attendance? Well, imagine that bitch after you've blinded her poor sweet shit stain of a a child. Oh my god! (laughs) (laughs) Hell yeah! (laughs) (laughs) This worked on all but one teacher. She still knew better. We'll call her Miss Bromison. Ms. Bromison's lesson was on halogen displacement reactions. Her demonstration was simple. Drop a few drops of dilute chloride solution, which is basically watered down bleach, into dilute solutions of potassium chloride, potassium bromide, and potassium iodide. The chloride ions will displace the bromide and iodine, turning the solutions red and brown, respectively. Right? Now, let me tell you a little bit about bromine. This shit is corrosive and toxic. In its pure form, it's a deep red, almost blood red. Uh, It's a liquid at room temperature, but it's extremely volatile producing thick red clouds of vapor that quickly fill any container. See attached picture for its full demonic glory. That's what we're looking at right here. Right? Ooh. I thought it was a Doom Eternal screenshot. It was like a gummy. Yes, Goomy. like a Haribo. A gummy. A gummy. 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 You gotta get Mia back on the pod. That'd be pretty fun, yeah. Uh... This stuff can easily burn your lungs and eyes. Bromide does, however, dissolve in water. So as long as the concentration of potassium, uh, as long as the concentration of potassium bromide is kept well below Uh 0.2 moles per liter, then little to no bromide gas will be released. The original protocol handed to me was for a solution of one mole per liter of potassium bromide which is more than enough to gas the entire school, let alone one Mm. class. (laughs) Hell yeah. They were never going to need to do it. I revised (laughs) this down to the much safer value of 0.05 moles per liter. Ms. Bromison did not like her authority (laughs) or competence questioned by a young, spotty college student with a part-time job, but I did not like being party to the gassing of the younglings uh, after <laughs> <laughs> so after about an hour of explaining on my part and much screaming and wailing on her part, we came to the most dangerous of agreements, which was a compromise. I've heard of these. <sighs> yes. <laughs> this is why you need to go with the fullest of Stalinism. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's the thing Demo- Democrats do, and it works so well. Yes. Republicans. <laughs> The protocol would be modified to include a fume hood to safely deal with the incoming gas bomb, and the solution of potassium bromide would also be lowered to a concentration of 0.2 moles per liter. This would still release the demonic red cloud of death that Miss Bromism didn't believe existed, but it would be small enough for the fume hood to deal with. Ms. Brumism signed all the required health and safety and liability forms before leaving with a shit-eating grin on her face. And like magic, the head lab tech rematerialized just after she left. (laughs) I tried convincing him this teacher should be removed from teaching chemistry and preferably removed from civilization altogether. But as a failed chemical engineer barely making a living in a school prep lab, 
he had long ago stopped giving a shit. I ensured the lazy bastard filled out all his paperwork, confirming that he agreed with the plan protocol. Uh, I put in an official complaint with the school office, and I sent a detailed account to the health and safety executive, stating the blatant disregard for safety from both the teacher and the main lab tech, and handed in my resignation. Hell yeah. Dude's drug. Dude's dude's drug, yeah. He's drug. drug. (laughs) Now, the rest of this account was told to me by my friend's uh, little brother. I had pre-warned him about this teacher and this demonstration, and he had warned his classmates. They were ready to run <clears throat> if they saw Miss Brominson summon forth the big red demon clouds of death. <laughs> I, am per- I am particularly grateful that they had that warning as Miss Brominson chose not to use the fume hood. In front of the entire class, she applied several milliliters instead of a few drops of chlorine solution to the flask containing 0.2 moles per liter of potassium bromide solution directly under her own face. Oh, yeah. Autobots (laughs) roll out. (laughs) As as the big red demon clouds of corrosive hellfire engulfed Miss Bromism, the class escaped before it could build up in the room. But don't worry, audience. This tale has a happy ending. Miss Bromism survived long enough to face charges of negligence. The head lab tech was fired. The kids got over two months off school. Well, all yes. the corrosive damage the bromide had caused was repaired. Kids rock. <laughs> and yours truly used the extra time gained from not gassing the children to learn how to pirate textbooks to get into home brewing <laughs> and eventually get a degree in theoretical physics congratulations yeah and in there the closest i get to replicating genocide is contemplating the vivisection of subatomic particles <laughs> signed Mixed organic solution containing ethanol and significant left chirolites. Sounds delicious. <laughs> Shake hands with danger. Well, what have well, we learned other than <laughs> use a fume hood for everything? Do not gas children. Uh, um, I would then- recommend if you're trying to do communism. You, you should actually try and do, you know, things that improve the quality of life of the workers. No, nah, that's cool. communism. <laughs> <laughs> the next episode is on the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Um, that's right. Yes. We have a live show in a matter of days. 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 Three days. Three to or however long it'll be when this comes out. Uh, can everyone hear me this time? Yes. yes. Yep. Alright, so we do not have a... Shouldn't say that. Uh, we may have tickets available. I just got an email. A couple people needed refunds, but I wanted to do sort of a... Uh, we may, we may not. I don't know what the timeline is on that, so don't get mad at me. Uh, have tickets available. Roz, I will get one for uh, uh, the other person, June's person, whose name I can never remember. Uh, yes, but you, you can still get tickets to, to the watch lo- the live stream, stream of yes. the show, which will be at Caveat New York City, New York State, uh, on the 3rd of August, one, year September, of our Lord. 3rd of September, baby girl. Yes. Yes. That's, yeah, no, it, it happened uh, over three mm-hmm. weeks ago. Um, <laughs> the 3rd of September in the year of our Lord 2021. I will say, you must show proof of vaccination to be allowed in. That is mm-hmm. per New York guidelines. That is not us. I'm yeah, and when, really when they, hopefully when they, we don't have any anti-vaxxers. When they listeners, say but... 
proof of vaccination. They mean proof. They don't. They do not mean you like yelling and like waving a fucking piece of paper that you downloaded from the internet that says that you don't have to take the vaccine because of your fucking like uh, ivermectin horse paste or whatever. You have to have been vaccinated to get in the venue. I personally uh, do have a religious exemption from getting the vaccine. So, um, unfortunately, uh, hmm. there will be w at least one person there who is not vaccinated. Yeah, and you're going to be breathing on everybody. Oh, absolutely. Because you are vaccinated. Don't do that. It's a joke. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, I will shoot you up with a needle. <laughs> you're going to show up yeah. with like a, 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 a dart gun just sh shooting vaccines into people. <laughs> what do you think the Havana syndrome is? Adam, well, do you have any commercials before we go? Commercials. Yeah, where can the people find you? Well, <laughs> if the people want more Adam, what do they do? Yeah, just just like Adam Dubai. Put that in, you'll find me. <laughs> <I don't, laughs> uh, otherwise, yeah, like my YouTube channel is Adam Something. It has this like nice for now. It has this nice pinkish wa vapor wave avatar because why not? And uh, yeah, feel free to find me there. I dunk on Elon Musk. I do urban planning. I dunk on PragerU. I dabble in politics. And I'm essentially a left tube channel, which uh, if I can believe what I've heard, I am the fastest growing left tube channel in the history of YouTube. So oh, yeah. pretty cool. Very nice. Yeah, like, uh, it was pretty, pretty, pretty insane. Like uh, the, It was a Dubai video that really sort of like shot me out. I went from 50,000 subscribers in two weeks to 350 and in one more week to 450 so it's pretty insane mm. oh yeah well, I, I, I I, at, at this point i am simply asking you the listener to subscribe both to adam and to us because i want that little fucking silver play button that they give yeah, you yes, need, when you have the little, uh, the, the, the button, like we need the button. Yeah, I, I, I think it's like a hundred thousand <laughs> subscribers. We're like almost halfway. I want the button. I want that button. Yes. <laughs> hey, yeah, I, I can put a preview of, of of this episode on my channel and direct oh, people yeah. to yours. Yeah. Please do. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow uh, I'm gonna do. Well, today it's two a.m. here, but I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do that. So. All right. well, thank you for coming on. It's a pleasure. Yes, thank you for coming. It, it was on. my it was pleasure. Good. I mean, as I said, as I said, like uh, do not eat, and uh, consequently, well, there's a problem. Was one of the inspirations for me to start my channel. So it was pretty cool to you know talk to you guys. Like I, I've been listening to you for like a rather long time before I even started my channel, which was like January this year. And now I'm here. It's like it's pretty freaking cool. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for having me on. It was, it was a pass oh, no to the master. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so once again, thank you very much for having me on, and it was it was a it was it was fun. So thank you. If you ever need a co-host, let me know. <laughs> oh, fuck you, buddy. I'm back. <laughs> I'm Liam, we're gonna make you Patreon. interview for your own job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. I think that Bye, was the podcast. Bye. Peace Bye. out. Bye. 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 Bye.